Hello folks, I'm looking at the moment at these eclipses that are coming up in the next few weeks and the likely developments that are going to occur as a result of them. We've got the total eclipse of the moon coming up conjunct Uranus at 15 degrees of Aries. I've already spoken at length about the influences this is likely to have on a large number of political figures, i.e. in the UK, Nigel Farage, David Cameron, who incidentally is toast. Uh, in, outside of the UK, I'm looking at the horoscope, particularly of Vladimir Putin. Um, there's likely to be developments in all of these people's lives over the coming month or so as a result of this. And I, and I find it very hard to see David Cameron as Prime Minister that much longer without either becoming a Churchill-like figure who sweeps all opposition away and just gets on with a job and becomes a world leader, or melts under pressure. And that's the end we'll see of him. Uh, the eclipse on the 8th of October, the total eclipse of the moon, is going to bring a lot of changes into the world. And it's going to see a lot of political change globally. The eclipse after that, on the 23rd of October, at zero Scorpio. Now, it's only a very small partial eclipse. And nine times out of ten, I'd be looking at it and thinking, hey, you can't call that an eclipse. It's only about 10%. It's really minor. It doesn't count. Thing is, it does. That eclipse is particular stinker in one or two specific, site-specific areas. Now, it does appear that the British royal family is under, about to undergo some fairly, well, not fairly, some permanently life-changing big developments and events and I do suspect that the eclipse on the 23rd of October is the start of this. I think that the last two weeks of October and the first two weeks of November are going to see um, immense changes in the influences of the British Constitution and its impacts out into the larger world. Both of these eclipses on the 8th and the 23rd of October are life changes. Uh, in many ways, they're direct reactions to the events of the last few years. And indeed, the eclipse on the 8th at 15 Libra, it's in a direct uh, relation to the Grand Cross pattern of April this year and the Mars retrograde in Libra. And this is Grand Cross plus one. This is um, the aftermath, if you like, or the results, not the process that's done. But these are the results coming through and there will be a direct correlation between the events of early October 2014 and mid-April 2014. And if, and if you need to know if you're one of these people that's going to get really hit, then you need to look at a couple of times earlier this year. You particularly need to look at the first 10 days of January. If you found the first 10 days of January this year particularly difficult and very volatile and frustrating, you may well find then that uh, mid-April would have also been a time of overheating, in which case you're going to need to exercise a degree of caution around the October the 8th eclipse. Alternatively, if you have one of these people who have found that this year, particularly early January and mid-April, have set you free, have released you from obligations, whether it be work, family, relationship or whatever, then what you're going to find is that this eclipse on August the 5th is going to be the finale, if you like, October the 8th, I'm sorry. It's going to be the finale to this process and that the, it will bring an element of closure. Both of these eclipses talk of closure. The eclipse of the moon on the 8th of October talks of closure of old systems, old statuses, old patterns and the emergence of something brand new with the conjunction to Uranus. The eclipse on the 23rd at zero Scorpio, it's a little bit more final. It's almost as if an epoch or an era is ending and there is some type of conclusion or closure. I suspect it's going to affect a number of people worldwide because inevitably around October some massive figure worldwide is probably going to depart. But it's much bigger than that. Rather than just spend the time of the eclipses looking at prominent figures or prominent groups, I'm looking at the anti, the un-Islamic state. Most, many of my Islamic friends are really hacked off of what's going on out there. They're calling it the un-Islamic state, and I concur. And Ukraine, and by now, Scotland and New Zealand, 
world's in turmoil and it seems to me that religion and the churches and the way that we've always prayed is now coming up for reassessment as well as the stature of certain important individuals. We're heading into a time of instability. It is short. It is sharp. It will hurt and it will be over by the start of November. Can't make it easy, can make it brief. See you on the rebound.